Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to animate individual letters of 3D text. So to make this work we're going to have to separate the string of text into individual characters and then turn each character into a 3D mesh and then that way we can control each individual letter. So let's see how this works. To make this work you're going to need FontLoader.js and TextGeometry.js from whatever type of 3JS you're using, whether it's 3.ModuleJS or 3JS. I left links to these files in the description below. If you want to animate them using TweenJS, you're going to need a script tag in your head section of your HTML file, and I left a link for this in the description below. And you're going to need a typeface JSON, which is a font in a JSON file. So let's download a font from Google Fonts and then use an online converter to convert it into a typeface JSON and then we'll bring that into our code editor. A good place to get free fonts is Google Fonts. And you know what, I think I'm just going to get Roboto. You know, I'm just going to click download the family. I'm going to download all the Roboto. Now I'm going to have to unzip it. So I'm just going to open that folder, right click it. I'm going to extract it, okay, hit extract. So I've got all the Roboto fonts. I'm going to use the facetype.js typeface generator. The link for this website is in the description below. Basically, you can just pick a font and it will convert it into a facetype JSON that we can use. Roboto medium and hit convert at the bottom here. You don't have to change the settings here. You can just hit convert. There we go. And it downloads the JSON to your computer. Now all you got to do is put it into your code editor. I have a fonts folder, so I'm going to put it in there. Here is my Roboto Medium regular uh, typeface JSON. Now we're ready to use it. All the script will be in my body section of my HTML file. So here I'm just importing the modules that I need. And if you bring these files into your code editor, you're going to have to make sure you change the path in these files to wherever 3.module.js is located in your code editor. You're going to have to do that for font loader, you're going to have to do that for orbit controls, and you're going to have to do that for text geometry. Okay, then I'm just declaring some global variables. Cars, this is going to be a new 3.group. This is where I'm going to place all the individual 3D meshes for each letter in this group. And I'm creating a new raycaster and I'm creating a new vector for my normalized pointer coordinates. We're going to use pointer so that you can use the mouse or touch or stylus and pen uh, to make this work. And I'm just adding a scene and a background color. The background color is sky blue. And then I'm adding a camera. Here I'm setting the position of the camera and then I'm telling the camera to look at the origin. Okay, here I'm making my render and I'm setting the enabled property to true for my shadow map so shadows can be rendered. Now I'm going to add my lights. My first light is an ambient light. An ambient light does not cast shadows. And then I'm adding a point light which does cast shadows and setting the cast shadow property of the light to true. And here I'm making my ground plane and I'm rotating it on the x-axis to make it flat and I'm setting the receive shadow property to true so the ground can receive shadow from other things in the scene. And now I'm setting my orbit controls. So I have my basic scene set and now we can play around with our text. So the string I'm going to render is hello and I'm going to store that in this text object. Here I'm creating a new instance of this font loader and we're going to use this font loader to load this typeface JSON that we created on that website. And then I'm going to create a function and I'm going to pass this font as this font object into this function. And in the side of this function, we're going to create our 3D text objects. So inside this function, I'm creating my font options object. And these are all the font options that you can play with and I'm setting the font to this font object that I passed into this function. So right now the string is all the letters of the text together. So now I need to separate the characters from each other. So I'm going to do that by putting them into an array. So each index in that array or each position in that array will be one character. So I'm creating that in const letters. Letters will be the array of letters in that text and I'm using the array from method and I'm creating an array from this text object. And if I console log this letters object, you'll see an array of five objects shows up and in each position in the array has a letter of that word. So now that we have an array of letters from our word, 
we are going to create a geometry and a material to create a mesh for each individual letter. So we're going to use the for each method. So I have letters, the array of letters for each. This is the method. So for each letter in letters, so letter is going to be each letter object in that array and J is going to be the index position of that object in the array. So J would be 0 for the first letter and for the second letter it would be 1, etc, etc. So here I'm creating the geometry for that letter. So it's new text geometry and I'm passing in the letter, whatever letter that is, H-E-L-L-O, and I'm passing in the font options that I created up here that specifies the font and the size and the height and all these things. That is going to be the text geometry for each letter. So the material will be an array. You can create different materials for different sides of the letter. The first material in the array will be the front side. So it's going to have an emissive color. It's going to be a random and it's going to have an emiss emissive intensity of 0.7 for mesh fong material. And the second material in that array, see there's square brackets around them, is just going to be a color. It's going to be a different color for the sides. So front material first, side material second. And then I'm going to pass the geometry and material into the mesh for each letter. And now each letter has a 3D mesh. Okay, I'm also going to name each letter in the name property. I'm just setting it to the index value. So that's J. So the name of the first letter will be zero. And then I'm going to set the cast shadow and receive shadow properties to true. So each letter can receive shadows from other objects and each letter can cast shadows on other objects. Now I'm going to position them. So I have this little formula here just so I could spread out the letters in a kind of position that I liked. And then I'm going to set the position of each letter according to this. Whatever this formula is for that index value, it's going to have a Y of 3 and a Z of 0. And then I'm passing each one of these letters into this cars group. So this is the new three group. Then I'm adding this cars group to the scene. Okay, so all the individual letters will be inside this cars group. Why is that? That way, if I wanted to use ray casting, I could just use ray casting to look inside this cars group rather than inside the entire scene. Because if I just want the user to be able to manipulate the letters, then I don't need them to look through the entire scene. It's just much simpler to have everything I want the user to interact with in a separate group. Okay, so our text effects are done. Now everything after this will just be manipulation of the individual letters. Add event handlers function. Inside this function, I'm just adding the event listeners so that the user can interact with it. I have a click event listener. It's going to run the function on mouse click. I have an event listener for pointer moves. So whenever the pointer moves, then the mouse position will be recalculated. And then an event listener for window resize in case the window is resized. So let's look at the function on mouse click. This function will animate all the individual letters separately. So I'm going to use Raycaster to do that. When you click the mouse, the Raycaster will get the coordinates from the pointer and the camera. And then it's going to make an array of what objects that ray is intersecting with. So it's going to search through the cars group children. And that's all the letters of the word. Okay, now I'm going to search through this intersects group for the first thing it intersects with and then animate all the letters of that word. So I just have some constants that I'm going to use to calculate the position and the time in the animation. So if intersects the length is bigger than zero, so remember it's searching through every member of the cars group. So if the ray is intersecting with one of the letters, then we're going to animate everything. So for each one of these letters, I'm going to pass in the child, which is one of the letters, and the index position. So what does the animation look like? There's three stages of the animation and they're all different. It will move to a new position and then to another new position and then back to the original position. So what am I changing? I'm changing the child position. So that's what this is here. I am animating the position of that letter in that cars group. So how am I animating? I'm going to this new random position, the random X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'm just picking a random number and then at the end, I'm putting in a random amount of time. So each letter will go to a different point and in a different amount of time. And then they'll all have the same easing. So it'll be easing bounce in and out. So it'll look kind of bouncy. And then it will update the animation as it goes. So that's the first animation. And then the second animation, I'm still animating the child position. Where is it going? It's going to wherever it ended up here 
to this new random position in this random amount of time and the easing is the same and again I'm updating it and then for the third animation I'm using the same formula I used to calculate the original X position for the letters that way I can move it to that position so I'm still animating the child position except it's going to the original position I'm using the same formula that I used before how long is it going to last it'll last this amount of time with the same easing and then it's updating so how do I get these animations to run all in a row I'm going to use the chain method here so I have the first animation and I'm chaining it to the second animation so they're linked together and I'm taking the second animation which is linked with the first animation and I'm chaining it to the third animation so now all three are chained together so how do I start it I'm going to call the first animation and start it I'm going to use this start method to start this chain of animations and that's it Us using tween.js makes it easy to animate objects and that what that's what makes them bounce all over the place and then bounce back to the start but I also have this hover over method where the mouse hovers over each letter and that front material disappears so let's see how that works so function on pointer moves so whenever the pointer moves the pointer coordinates will be updated in this function so I have this hover effect off function first so it restores the material to its normal appearance function reset materials and I'm just going through each letter in this cars children so I'm using the for each method and for each of one of these letters I'm setting the material zero so that's the first material that is the front material of each letter I'm setting the color eight to true that means it's going to show the color and for ho hover effect on the front material does not appear so I'm going to set that to false so function hover pieces I'm getting the ray caster so I'm getting the coordinates from the pointer and the camera so when you're on that letter the material will turn invisible so I'm going to get the first object that the ray intersects with and I'm setting the material the first material of that object that's the face material I'm setting the color rate property to false so it will not be shown and in our animate loop I'm updating the tween animations I'm updating the orbit controls I'm resetting the material first before I show the hover pieces the reset materials is first so it's always making sure that the material is normal in appearance but if it's not then the hover pieces will make that individual front material invisible and that's how you can render and animate individual 3d letters in 3js